What's up everybody, it's Joe here with Joseph Blake Photography and in today's video we have a bunch of DJI news. The N3 goggles just got released, we've got new leaked pictures of the mini microphone, we've got new leaked video of the Mavic 4 Enterprise drone, and there's a ton more to talk about, so let's jump in. Again, I'm Joe, I am a landscape and portrait photographer here in Las Vegas, Nevada, and this is my channel, Joseph Blake Photography, where we talk about tech and news and gear and tips and how-tos and reviews and tricks, and sometimes we go on the occasional adventure, and if that's the type of thing that you're into, I'd appreciate it if you hit the subscribe button, and if at the end of the video you think I've done a good job, go ahead and hit the like button. If you're a content creator, whether it's here on YouTube, whether it's anywhere else on social media, or if you're just delivering to clients or your friends or your family, or if you're just doing it for yourself, that's the kind of stuff that we talk about here on this channel. Links to all my social media platforms down below as well as all the gear that I use. But that's enough about me and the channel. Let's jump into talking about all of this DJI stuff that we have. So as expected this week, we got the DJI N3 goggles for FPV drones. These are specifically designed to pair very nicely with the Neo drone, but it also works with a lot of the other DJI accessories. This is a 1080p 54 degree field of view angle single display with a roomy interior uh, that allows you to wear things like glasses. It's got an auto defog feature, built-in headband, built-in battery, which can go for 2.7 hours, works with OcuSync 4, and it has a video transmission bitrate of 60 megabits per second. And if you're using the DJI RC motion controller, you can actually use that as a cursor to control some of the UI elements inside the headset. And right now it is compatible with the Avada 2 as well as the Neo. Now there's a number of combos available, but at $229, if you've already purchased the Neo and you're getting comfortable with it, right? You haven't slammed it into the deck hard enough to destroy it. This would be a great accessory to kind of bring yourself to that next level when it comes to FPV flying. Moving next to talk about the DJI Mic Mini. We're seeing more pictures, more marketing images on Twitter. Uh, Igor Bogdanov has a couple of shots that I'll share here that show it plugged directly into USB-C on a MacBook. It also looks like there's going to be a bit of a lanyard that you can get to hold it uh, or that will easily clip to stuff around your neck. This thing looks very, very small. And pricing wise, what it looks like we're seeing is about $170. And that's for the dual module unit, less for the single module unit, and you can actually buy individual units for even less than that. And there's also a rumored image uh, of a package that includes the Osmo Pocket uh, as kind of a vlogging creator multi-kit. Ex-user Nurin Tasha posted a video from a creator that actually looks like they got that in their hands, they were unboxing it. Also on X, we have uh, Gabe Shakur, who indicated that he spoke with the DJI rep that told him that this will be the last product announcement of the year. That means that in 2024, we will not be seeing the Mavic 4 and we will not be seeing the DJI 360 action camera. Grain of salt as to whether that, that information is correct, but I will link to all of those profiles down below. So if you wanna follow them over on X, go ahead and click those links. Also missing from the DJI lineup right now is the RC track device that we were expecting to see with the DJI Air 3S release. It was in a lot of the marketing materials that we originally saw leak, but then when the drone was announced, we never actually saw it. We've actually kind of seen it in place uh, in some presentations uh, from retailers, but we've not actually seen the device itself and we haven't really gotten a whole lot of details, but it is designed to allow you to both remotely control and uh, add additional tracking options via GPS for the Air 3S and potentially the Mavic 4 when it comes out. Now, speaking of the Mavic 4, Osita LV over on X has posted a video of what looks to be an updated version of a Mavic Enterprise drone. Now, you can tell that it's an Enterprise drone for a couple reasons. Number one, it's got that kind of hump in the back, which is normally for additional communications tech. The camera package uh, includes a lot more than we normally see on the cinema drones. But looking really closely at this body, and this is a crashed drone, by the way, looking really closely at this body, you can kind of tell that there's some different stuff going on here. This is definitely a different body design. And there's two specific things that I wanna to point to. Number one is that the, the drone itself looks taller. There's a lot more body to it. It looks a little bit bigger. And you can see that when you look towards the front, the distance between that kind of front overhang, right, that porch, 
uh, and the bottom is considerably larger, which obviously makes room for the larger kind of display package. The other interesting thing about the design here is that when you look closely at the, the arms that extend out the propeller motors, they're pretty small. They're thin, they're very light, and that is not something that we've seen in the last or most recent versions of the Mavic 3 or the Mavic 3 Enterprise. So I really do believe that this is a kind of hybrid version of what we're going to be seeing with the Mavic 4. Now, the Mavic 4 that we've seen so far actually looked like it had that big kind of uh, softball size uh, camera module in the front. Well, now I think we might be seeing a difference between the Mavic 4 and the Mavic 4 Pro or the Mavic 4 Cine. And I think that this body may be more akin to the Mavic 4 that we're going to see that will have a more traditional three-way access gimbal inside it, but the larger body and the thinner arms. And then they'll utilize that as the platform that they'll uh, extend into the Mavic 4 Enterprise. The other indication that this is not the Mavic 4 Pro, uh, the model that we've seen that has that just gigantic front camera module, is the fact that it does have front sensors on it for obstacle avoidance. And what we've seen in every leak that we have of the Magma 4 Pro are those multiple super wide fisheye kind of uh, 180 degree lenses on the top and the bottom that will make up the majority of its obstacle sensing system. At least that's what we believe thus far. They may also incorporate some of the lighter technology that we saw in the Air 3S, but again, we'll have to see more to know for sure. The other image that we have, which is coming from our good friend Igor Bogdanov, uh, is a look at the remote controller, uh, which it looks like the model is indicated as the RC Plus 2. Now, if that is an indication that we will be sticking with OcuSync 4 and that the Mavic 4 or the Mavic Enterprise will continue to use OcuSync 4, continue to support, uh, that, the, that the support for OcuSync 4 will continue and that the RC2 remotes will continue to be usable. Again, that goes towards that thing that I've been talking about where it looks like DJI is really building this ecosystem where we're going to be seeing a lot of products that can interoperate and work together, which means that as consumers and as you know, professionals and folks who are purchasing this technology, we would be able to kind of pick and choose what makes the most sense for us, both in terms of features, budget, uh, and, and just kind of other specifics on these accessories and on these products to put together the best system for us and for our individual uses, as opposed to being kind of pigeonholed or forced into the most expensive or the cheapest option. Now, obviously from some of these images and video, there's not really a whole lot that we can glean other than these kind of design changes that we're seeing, but it is again, more information that points towards eminent release. Although again, probably not going to be until the first quarter of next year. DJI has released a ton of products so far in the second half of 2024. And the fact that we have, you know, a, a change in administration here in the United States, we have, you know, continued issues with DJI working with Customs and Border Protection. The US market right now is somewhat shut down for DJI and we're waiting to see how that all gets resolved. But they continue. Uh, to release products, which is exciting because there's a lot of us that are waiting for this to get resolved so that we can buy them because we love DJI gear and we want it. We want to keep using it. The other interesting thing about this type of situation is that honestly, it, it doesn't go without some sort of repercussions, right? Normally action has some sort of reaction. So with the customs and border protection issue that we have in the US where we're stopping DJI products from being sold, DJI is suing the Department of Defense. There's all of these issues here. We still potentially uh, got the, the CCP Drones Act, which with a Republican-led legislature here in the United States, there's a much higher likelihood that that, that bill would pass. China has kind of retaliated uh, by blocking the kind of shipment of the batteries that companies like Skydio uh, an American company, but an American company that still has to manufacture a lot of their components in the East, that, that they are now unable to get uh, the number of batteries that they need and they're having to ration it to customers. So that also can become an issue. 
So those are all the types of things that we're seeing on the DJI news side. I'm sure there's more, I'm sure that I've missed some. Let me know down in the comments if there's something that you've heard or seen that I'm not seeing. I will leave links down below to all of the folks that I am watching over on Twitter X uh, to see what information there is out there and I will keep you posted as information becomes available. If that's the type of thing that you're interested in and you wanna get posted continuously, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and turn the bell on. You'll get notified when I make a video about DJI News. And if this is the kind of video that you're into, I'd appreciate it if you hit the like button if this was informative for you. And down below, you're gonna find all of my social media links, but I would really appreciate it if you head over to my Instagram account, follow me there, I'm rebuilding, and I would really, really like to see that number get higher. Speaking of numbers getting higher, we have just crushed the 15,000 subscriber mark here on YouTube. And I would really appreciate it if you guys just, I wanna get to 18. Let's get to 18 before the end of the year because that is gonna help me uh, have access to things that will allow me to do better and cooler stuff even for you into next year, like reviews and accessing uh, different events and activities. So again, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.